All right, this is a Columbia 8-track. I have been told it's losing one channel. But you know how that goes. It may be, but it may not have anything to do with the 8-track. It could be whatever the 8-track is connected to. So... Plug this in. Put my stereo to auxiliary. I've got it connected through auxiliary on my stereo. Emerson Lake and Palmer. It's just one I have handy. Playing. And we do not have sound out of one channel. Alright, so, alright, step one, clean it. I won't be able to see clearly anything I'm doing here, but I probably won't be able to see clearly anything I'm doing here, but Heads look clean. Uh, yeah, a little bit of crap on there. So clean. A little roller we have in here. And the heads. And I don't think that did anything, but you never know. Let's see what happens now. Oops. It's unplugged. Nope, not an easy one. Wait. Nope, not an easy one. So the right channel is the channel that's out. So let me just verify that the, that it follows if I swap those two around. Yeah, and it does. So and this looks to be An A track that needs to be removed by releasing these screws and sliding it out the front. So let's see if we see anything that jumps out. Because uh, I don't have a lot of time today, so at least this will give us a, a first kind of idea if there's something that's just. Maybe something became disconnected. Some erosion causing an issue. With the other projects I've worked on today though, it, what's weird is it's either all of them are super simple and quick or all of them are super convoluted and take a long time. Today has been a uh, kind of a quick day, so. There's the 8-track mechanism. Let's see. First, see if we have continuity where we can measure it. So I want to make sure this beeps. Right. So red. Let's see. Oh, that goes into that covered box there. Well, first let's see. We have continuity between the grounds, so that's good. Let's try. 
trying to get my bearings on what's going where on this. I think I can remove this cover. Wait, let's, what is that? Uh, no, that's the channel. I'm going to make sure this cable has continuity and the right channel is the channel that's out. Huh. So this has bendable tabs to line up to a slot. So it doesn't fall apart. Just on the top though. All right. So what I want is beep from red here to red here, right? Red here to red here. Okay, and that's good. And I should have blue to blue. Make sure that's good. Make sure I'm hitting the right one, which I was not. All right, so we have blue to blue. So I might see if there even is a schematic on this. Um, failing capacitors. Right, failing capacitors can cause a channel outage. This is a super simple board. Here we have red and green. I assume those go to the heads. And it looks like they do. So I'm going to shine light underneath here. Make sure wire is not come off of the heads. And it has not. And luckily red is on top. So I want to check my light here. I want to check red here. I mean the white. White there on the red cable. White to white. And that's good. So you know I'll check ground just to just to be sure. So ground here ground anywhere, right? So ground there is good. Ground here is good. Right. And ground here is oh and ground there is good. Alright. Let me make sure I'm just hitting the wire. Yeah, so I got so the cables are good. So Looks like there's, I don't know if this has some kind of muting switch. Maybe, I'd have to look at the schematic. I don't see, well, I don't, I don't see when that's for the channels. And that's for the channels. There's something here. Oh, that's not anything. And this is not a recorder. Sometimes if it's a recorder, the recording switch will, like on a cassette deck, the recording switch will cause an issue. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I may have to feed a signal into this board, right? So what I can do is feed a, like a one kilohertz tone into this board on the right channel and the left channel and then right from or actually be I'd feed it into here right feed it in here to here see if it's if it's good here and it's bad here that means it's being lost somewhere in this board so I think that's what I will try to do next uh, I may I'm gonna have to put something underneath that board so I don't uh, short anything so let me get that set up and and see what happens. All right, so I'm going to get this set up. 
and turn that on, turn my signal generator on, put that clip to ground, whoop, had that clip to ground. Set this on some steel wool, right? No, of course not. Don't ever do that. That would be very stupid. So I got a piece of cardboard here. I'm just going to set this board on it and make sure that it's not touching anything underneath. I don't want any shorts. This one wire is kind of preventing me from getting it in here in a real good position. So I think that should be okay. And I gotta be careful not to move that board around too much. All right, so uh, let me feed my signal. Into here, feed it into red. So that's clipped on there. One kilohertz tone going through there. Um, it's on sine wave. One thing I need to figure out is the switch to power that board up. So I'm not going to plug it in, but there should be a there's a switch here somewhere when you plug the tape in. To I think it's right there. I think that's the switch. So. All right, so I just want to see if this, what I think powers this on, powers this on. Yep, so that's the switch. It's going to be kind of tricky to do this with two hands. But I got my scope set up. It's running back here. You won't really be able to see it. But first I want to, I'm going to ground my scope. Um, man, I got a mess going on here. Ground my scope. And I want to pop it on to red here. All right, so I should have a tone going in. And let's see if I power this on. I see, oh my gosh, I see a very, very nasty, I see a very, very nasty wave there. Horrible. Not a sine wave at all. So what I want to do now is compare that to the left side, the good side. And I should be able to ground here. And pop that on that post. And now I'm going to do a right and left comparison. So I'm going to connect this lead to the left. And I want to see what I'm getting on the left hand side. Make sure nothing's touching anything. Shouldn't be touching. Everything's grounded. All right. All right so. One kilohertz. All right. So right and left, definitely a an ugly wave on the right and oh oh oh. So there, that looks good on right. Oh, well, here's the weird thing. So, all right, let me try this again. That's 
it's a pretty erratic. So here, so here's what's going on. So when I go from right to right, I don't get anything. Left to left is the same way. But if I reverse them, so if I feed the tone into the left channel, measured on the right channel, I get the one kilohertz sine wave. But the right output is a lot uglier than the left. The left looks like a sine wave. The right looks like garbage. Yeah, left is a lot better. Let me change that. Let me, there we go. That's clean. And let me reverse these leads. Do my test again. Nothing's touching anything it shouldn't be touching. Yeah, so right output is all jacked. Left is, is much better. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull capacitors and test the capacitors on this uh, board here and see if we can track down bad capacitor, transistor, something like that. I'm not convinced that that's the problem, but that's a pretty easy board to get to. So I should be able to, uh, and I'll see if I can find a schematic on this. I don't know about a Columbia Stereo 8, 8 track. I don't know if I can find one. So it's a model number 2692. I'm just kind of weighing options. Um, just doing another look just to see if there's anything else I need to look at before I tear into that board. And I think that's probably the, the next step. Pull some capacitors in that board and see what's going on. So nothing available on this in terms of a service manual or a schematic or anything like that. So we're going to be kind of guessing as to what's going on here. Um, so I, I saw this in another video somewhere. I'm going to mark all these capacitors kind of facing me here. This one is, that one's got a, and that one's bad. That one's got a big bubble on the, in the metal on the top, so. Definitely a contender. Could be one of these smaller ones, so. Because I'm going to pull these out and test them. Sorry, you don't want to see my head. Pull these out and test them. Um, let's start with the big ones. I'm going to start with this one. See what's going on with that one. Let's pop that out real quick. See what's going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to speed through pulling these out. If I see anything of note, I will pause and talk about it. So all of these are way out of whack. They're weird value capaci capacitors also. Like, well, the hundreds are okay, but the fifties, uh, I don't have it. I don't have any fifties. I use this 50. So there's a chart in the ESR tester. So here's the issue. That cap with the bulge on the top, if I measure capacitance on this one, all right, so this is supposed to be 50 microfarads. It's measuring 73, but it has an ESR of 13, right? So I'm just going to look at the 47 microfarad, right? 47 at, what did I say this was, 10? 47 at 10, right? ESR should be around, what, 5.4? So that's high ESR. Comparing that to the other one, 
the one sitting next to it, it has an ESR of 2.4. So the ESR in the other cap is a little more in line. It's got a capacitance of 100. So what I'm thinking is, and without a schematic, I'm completely guessing here. But I am assuming that that has nothing to do with power and its signal. So I think I could get away with replacing all of these with 116s. Make sure what these big ones were. These big ones were 100. Yeah, 16s. And I've got a bunch. I've, I have a ton of 150s. I've got these 116s that I have no problem getting rid of. So let me pop these in, and we're just going to see what happens. We'll, we'll retest for sound, see if that was the issue. Get this crap out of the way. And I'll speed through throwing these back in, and we'll see what we get. All right, I'm going to give this a whirl, see if that gets a sound on both channels. Nothing's touching, nothing's grounding, anything. Ooh. I get a strange hum. Oh, <laughs> it's like I get a strange hum. What? What did I do? Well, I unplugged the stupid thing. It did plug back in. All right. Still only sound from one chair. Still only sound from one channel and the same channel is bad. So that capacitor was not the problem. So let's do a little more fishing. All right, well, what I was doing was probing the collectors on the transistors, and I, you know, I don't think this board is the problem. So, yeah, it cost me four capacitors. What the hell, right? I can always pop them back out if I want to keep them. So I'm wondering, now this head actually goes up and down. So what I'm curious about is what this head is doing when I apply power to it. What I am going to do now or next is mount this board back into its original position. So it's sitting in here like so. Like that. And this. It's in here like that. And this side. Was position like this. I'm not going to bend the tabs back because I may have to do something with this board again. There's always one wire. It doesn't want to do what it's supposed to do. All right, so that board is now protected again.
That's kind of a bummer. Would have been nice if it would have been that goofy cap. You know, I've had a couple projects with 50 microfarad capacitors. I should probably see if I can find some. Turn that off, turn this off. All right. So what I want to see is, so the head floats up and down. I want to see what that head is doing when I pop it. an 8-track in here. Sorry, I just want to... I have a really bad habit of not putting things back where they go. I just kind of throw it to the side and then I'm looking for it. So I'm trying to get better at doing that. I'm not doing that. Putting things where they go is what I'm trying to get better at. So here's what I'm talking about. So I don't know if you can see the head. With glasses on. I don't know if you can see the head or not. But silver thing right there. Oh, you can't see it. Head. See how it floats up and down? I know it's just for the for the tracks, I'm sure, or the channels. But I just want to see what that thing is doing. I'm not the 8-track master. I work on them occasionally. Yep, that just changes the position of that. So. All right, so what have we confirmed? We confirmed that the cables are good. We confirmed that in and out of the board, after replacing these capacitors, I get a signal. So what does that leave us with? The head, the head could be, could have gone bad. These are power. The head is connected. One thing I did not check, however, was let me put my test lead on. So remember how, how I had to reverse the leads, like right and left? So like it would come in on what I thought was the right, but it would exit on what I, what I know to be the left. When I tested for continuity between the head and this board, I didn't do both channels. I don't know if I can cleanly get the both channels, but I want to look at make sure I have continuity from here. Are the here are kind of the test points, right, on this board for the two channels. These are this is the cable that's coming from the head. So I want to see if I can. Shit, I need a. Again, I'm just listening for the tone here. I can't tell if that is, that should be ground. So this should be positive. So what I'm listening for is the beep. I'm getting so there's continuity from at least the cable coming from the head to this board. And the ground wire is good. Sorry, I'm just touching the ground, the uh, metal chassis here. 
and I'm not getting continuity to the left channel or the right channel, whatever the hell channel it is. I'm not getting continuity on that. So, um, gosh, on this, I'm thinking, I'm thinking it's a problem with the head. I'm going to try something, though. Now, I'm going to pause what I'm going to do now because I need to have sound for more than, you know, the three seconds that I'm allowed when I'm listening to something. So I'm going to just kind of click away and come back, and I want to see, I want to see what's going on with uh, something here. All right, check it out. I discovered something. Broken clean off. That black wire there. I'm going to have to look at the video and see if that was broken before. When I popped it out of there, and I cannot tell where it was connected. I have no idea what that wire was going to. So I'm going to review the video real quick. So I solved the uh, mystery of the, <clears throat> the lost channel. So on the board, we have these two mi uh, five microfarad capacitors. And if we throw these on my tester, we will see that... This doesn't even recognize that there is a capacitor attached. However, this one does read. It read high. It's 8.3 or 7.5. It was 8.3 a minute ago. So I replaced these with 10 microfarad capacitors because I don't have any fives just to see if this would fix the issue and it has resolved the issue. However, now... <clears throat> There's a little bit of noise. I've got to make sure that uh, I may have to put some of these, the 50 microfarad capacitors back in. I have some kind of uh, kind of interference noise, so I think uh, those might, might actually be power and not signal. So I'm going to pop those back in. But if I pop this in, I get sound bulb channels. I just have kind of a hiss in one of the channels, so let me uh, pop these old capacitors back in and see what that changes. Okay, so what I found was after I replaced the two capacitors that um, the one cap that was resulting in the loss of the one channel, I had a noise, kind of sounded like a noisy transistor, white noise. What I did is I went through and changed the transistors. That didn't have any effect. I found a one microfarad capacitor up here that was the problem. I just went through and recapped the entire board. I didn't shoot it on video. I wasn't even thinking at the time. So this whole board's been recapped. It wasn't that much. I mean, here are all the transistors that I replaced, and um, here are all the capacitors. So, I mean, it was a quick job, right? I mean, that's not a lot of work there at all. Now, it sounds good. Sound of both channels. No more white noise. So I'm going to call this one done. And I can deliver this to the customer. So if you like what you see, hit like, hit subscribe. And I'm going to button this up and uh, deliver it. And I'll see you in the next video.